Hey guys, welcome to a new video. In today's video, we're going to look at a lead code problem and the problem's name is cheapest flights within K stops. So in this question, we are given N, which represents the number of cities and they're connected by some number of flights. You are given an array called flights where every element inside the flights array represents three elements. The first element in every flight represents the from and the second element represents to, which is the destination. And the third element represents the price which will take to fly from source to destination. So this indicates there is a flight from source to destination with a cost of price which is the last element inside every flight. So you are also given three integers source, destination and k and our task is to return the cheapest flight from source to destination with at most k stops. If there is no such route we have to return minus one as our output. Now in this example n is equal to 4 which represents the four cities 0, 1, 2 and 3 and we are given the flight array. And this is the source, this is the destination and this is the price. To fly from 0 to 1 it is taking 100. So to fly from 1 to 2 it, it is taking 100 again. To fly from 2 to 0 it is taking 100. Fly from 1 to 3 it is taking 600. To fly from 2 to 3 it is taking 200. And the source is 0 and the destination is 3. So these are the targets. So we have to start here and we have to end here. And we can take max k equal to 1. k stops in between. So we start from here. Where can we go? It has only one outgoing path. So you go from 0 to 1 and k is equal to 1. And from 1 where can you go? You can go to 2 or you can go to 3. So initially you went from here. So the total price is equal to 100. If you go from 1 to 2, the total price is 100. But k will become 2. 2 is greater than k. k is equal to 1. k can max be 1. So if you go here, you end the iteration here. And this is not the destination. So you can't go here. And what is the other way? You can go here. Once you reach here, that is the destination. But what is the price you're paying? You're paying 600. The answer is going to be 100 plus 600 which is 700 which is the expected output here. So here we are going to start from here and we have to end here right. So what comes to your mind to form the shortest distance. So to find the shortest distance you always have to go with BFS. So this will give you the shortest distance but here the problem is this is a weighted graph. BFS will work on unweighted graph because for example if we have this uh, graph so you can't directly apply BFS because here we start with the initial node and we add this into the queue and in the next iteration we are going to access this level and here as you can see you already reached the destination you found the destination from source to destination 1 to 3 and the cost is equal to 250 and you return 250 as the output because you found the destination but that is not the shortest path because in a weighted graph there are other ways also to go so you can go from 1 to 2 and you can go from 2 to 3 and you can go from 3 to uh, this is 4 so you can go from 2 to 4 and you can go from 4 to 3 and this path is going to cost you 50 plus 20 plus 10 which is equal to 80 and there is also one more path 1 to 2 to 3 which is going to cost you 90 but here the shortest is 80 so 80 will be your output so you can't directly apply BFS on a weighted graph but here it says that you have one more metric that you can take max k stops so here once you reach this level, so if we say this is L1 and this is L2, here k is equal to 0 and here k is equal to 1 and you can still go further because k is still 1 here, here k will become 2. It means you can't go down from here. This is the last level you can reach with k is equal to 2. So from here you can still go to this level. So here we can apply BFS on a weighted graph. Even if there are weights, we can apply BFS because of this condition of k which we are given as input in our question. So let's take one more example and see how we can apply BFS and build our adjacency list to calculate our output. And as we know, for BFS, we have to use a queue to keep track of all the nodes in every level. So let's see how we can solve that. So let's take this example. We have to find the shortest path from 1 to 3 and number of stops is equal to 2. So here we are going to keep track of the shortest distance for every path. So I create an array which is going to have the same number of n. Here n is equal to 5 right. So I create an array shortest distance and before implementing BFS we have to make our adjacency list right. So we have to build our adjacency list from the input flights array. So I create an adjacency list using hash map where the key is going to be the source and the value is going to be the destination and the cost. So this is going to be an integer array with a list. So this will be inside a list. So initially we are at 1. 
so for one what is the outgoing uh, distances we can go to 2 and we can go to 3 so 2 what is the cost it is 10 and we can go to 3 what is the cost it is 50 so those are the two outgoing bounds for one and now we go to the next and for two what are the outgoing lists we can go to four we can go to three so take two you can go to four and it will take cost 10 you can go to three and it will take cost 30 and next for three there's no outgoing bounds for three so you can't go anywhere so for four you can go to three and you can go to five for three it was taking 15 and for five it is taking five and from five you can go to three so for three it is going to take five and that is the only element and now to implement bfs we have to keep track of a queue which will uh, go level by level we start with this level so we implement queue as a linked list right so initially inside the queue we add the source and the distance is zero so to reach one from one it is going to take zero distance and initially inside this distance array we are going to fill with the maximum possible value that is 2 power 31 minus 1 so these are the index positions but let me represent them as nodes so i'll change them to 1 2 3 4 5 so now we access this element and add it into the queue what is the shortest distance to reach one and one is the source it is zero so update that value to zero so to reach node one it is going to take zero distance and from one what are the outgoing nodes it is going to access the adjacency list it is two and three so for two what is the maximum value it is two part 31 minus one or 10 what is the value which you can use you can use 10 right that is the shortest distance you can uh, reach for two so you update that and for three it is 50 so you update that to 50 go to the next level of the bfs the next level is 2 and 3 so these true will be added into the queue so 2 comma 10 and 3 comma 50 are added into the queue because these are the two uh, nodes which we visited and after adding we updated those values into the queue by comparing it with its previous values we keep track of the number of stops we made until now we it was initially zero so now we reached here it is still zero once we expand this will be incremented to one now we are going to the next uh, expansion right we reached uh, till here and we reached till here and now 3 is the destination and there are no outgoing nodes for 3 so you can't expand here but from 2 you can go to 3 or you can go to 4 so there are two expansions so add those into get these uh, adjacency list for 2 because we are at 2 so we are going to 4 to go to 4 we update uh, the value that is the previous distance 10 uh, which we reached until 2 and from there to 4 it will take 10 so the total distance is 20 so 4 comma 20 is added into the queue and for 3 to 2 you use 10 and from 2 to 3 you use 30 so to reach 3 you are going to use total 40 and now we update our values to reach 4 what is the uh, value it is 20 or 2 power 31 minus 1 which one is shorter it is 20 so update it with 20 to reach 3 the previous value was 50 and the current value is 40 what is the minimum it is 40 so update it and now you can remove these from the queue and this also is visited this also is visited so these are done and now the total number of stops is equal to 1 now to go one step further from 4 so this reached the end here and from 4 you can go here and you can go here so we increment one more stop so from 4 we expand its value so from 4 you can reach 3 but what will be the value it is 35 and you can reach 5 which is 10 plus 10 plus 5 which is 25 5 comma 25 so update the values now compare with 3 what is the value 40 is there 35 is there what is shorter 35 for 5 it is 2 power 31 minus 1 it is 25 what is shorter it is 25 so update the value and now you can remove them from the queue and now k is equal to 2 and to go further we are at 5 but we can end our iteration here we don't have to expand for 5 to, to check if it is 3 because we reach the max limit if we want to expand for 5 we have to increment by 1 and this is 3 but this 3 is greater than 2 there is no use of expanding this path because we are violating the number of stops so we end the iteration here because we kept track of this and once this condition satisfies what is the destination the destination is 3 and the shortest value which is present at 3 is 35 so 35 is your out 35 is your output because this is the path you can reach the shortest value 1 to 2 2 to 4 4 to 3 so 1 to 2 2 to 4 and 4 to 3 has the value 35 whereas 1 to 3 has the value 50 but we need the shortest path 35 is shortest so we got 35 as our output now let's implement these steps in a java program so coming to the function given to us this is the function name this is the input n representing the number of cities these are the number of flights and these are the three integers source destination and k so let's start off by building the adjacency list 
So I'm going to use a hash map. So the key is going to be the integer which is representing the source and the value is going to be a list of integer arrays which is going to store the destination and the price for the source to destination. Now we need to iterate through the flights array using a for each loop. So I create a for each loop and iterate through the input flights and we are accessing one flight at a time and then we are going to build our adjacency map. So here as you can see we are inserting the source for every flight in the key which is the integer and the value is going to be an array in a form of a list. So I'm creating a list and adding an array into that list and the list is going to contain the flight 1 and flight 2 index. So this is going to be the first element inside the array and this is going to be the second element inside the array. So this will happen for all the flights that is the input given to us and our adjacency list is ready. Now we need a distance array which will store the shortest distance until that city. So it will be of the length n given to us. So I create a array which is of the size n which will represent the shortest distance for that index. So shortest distance of 0 will represent the shortest distance for reaching destination 0. And similarly for destination 1, 2 and 3 what is the shortest distance. So initially I'm going to fill this array with the maximum possible value. So I use arrays.fill to fill the shortest distance array with the maximum possible value. So all the values inside this are initially going to have the maximum possible value. Now we need a queue to implement BFS. So a queue is represented as a linked list and it is going to contain integer arrays. And now initially we fill our queue with the source. So whatever is the source, what is the shortest distance to reach the source? It is zero, right? So I add source and the value zero into the queue. Now we need to keep track of the number of stops we made until now. So we need an integer variable. So I create a variable stops which is initially zero. Now I need to iterate through the queue. So until this queue is empty, I keep on running a while loop. So until the queue is empty, we keep on running the while loop or we also stop this uh, iteration the number of stops we made until now is less than or equal to k once the number of stops are greater than k we stop our iteration and whatever is present inside this distance array for the destination will be returned as the output and now we need to find the length of the current queue so that we have accessed all the nodes inside the current level so initially we access this so bfs is level order traversal right so we need to access all the nodes in the current level so i find the size of the queue and store it inside the variable length. And now we use a while loop again to iterate all the current nodes inside the current level. So until this length becomes zero, we keep on iterating this while loop. Now we are accessing the array present inside the queue by using the poll method and storing it inside temp. And inside this temp, we are having the node and its distance. So we extract the two values present at temp of 0 and temp of 1. Temp of 0 has the node and temp of 1 has the distance. And now we have to check if this node is not present inside the adjacency list as key. Then we skip the current iteration and go on to the next iteration. So if the adjacency list which created does not contain the node as key, then we just skip the iteration by the continue keyword. And now we can proceed further. If this statement is skipped, it means that this node is present inside the adjacency list. So for that node, we get its corresponding value and inside this value, we have an array, right? So we need to iterate through all the list members present inside the array. So I'm getting the value of the current node from the adjacency list and storing it inside the array. And now we have to extract the elements present inside this array. So E of 0 contains this value and E of 1 contains this value. And what are we storing inside the adjacency map? We are storing the source and for that source we are storing its destination and what is its cost. So for every array present inside that list we have to extract its node that is its neighbor. So from the map we extracted this value and stored it inside neighbor and we are extracting the cost and storing it inside this variable cost. Now for this distance we have to add the cost and check if it is less than the shortest distance value present inside this array. So if the cost plus the distance is greater than or equal to the shortest distance for that neighbor, then we don't have to continue our BFS. So we skip our BFS using the continue keyword. Else it means that this value is less than the shortest distance. So we update the shortest distance variable with this value. So shortest distance of neighbor is equal to cost plus distance. And now we have to update this value into the queue also, right? So we add that neighbor and its shortest distance value into the queue. And now before going to the next iteration, that is before expanding to the next level, we increment our stops variable so that we check if this condition still holds true. Only then we proceed further. And now finally outside this uh, while loop, we have to handle this case that if there is no path, if there is no path, 
the shortest distance for the destination index is still going to have the maximum possible value. So we check that if still that value is equal to integer dot max value, we return minus one. Else we will return the shortest distance for the index DST. So we are going to return by checking the condition that if the shortest distance array at the distance index position is still having the maximum possible value, then we return minus one. It means there is no path. We haven't updated that value. Else we will return the shortest distance value, whatever is present at this index as the output. Now let's try to run the code. The test case are being accepted. Let's submit the code and a solution has been accepted. So the time complexity of this approach is big O of n plus e into k, where n is the number of cities, which is the input given to us, and e is the number of flights inside this flights array, and k is the maximum number of stops we can make to reach from source to destination. So here we are using big O of n to fill our uh, distance array, and e into k is that we are iterating through all the edges inside this flights array maximum k times. So in the worst case, we have to iterate every edge k number of times so e into k so that overall time complexity is big o of n plus e into k and similarly the space complexity is also big o of n plus e into k because we are using a queue and the reasoning is the same as the time complexity that's it guys thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video